In case you didn't get a chance to look at the bios on the page, I'll just introduce our performance today. Jennifer Wrigley is from Orkney, islands a little bit north of the mainland of Scotland. She's internationally recognized as one of the leading fiddle players and composers to come out of Scotland in recent years. And her style reflects musicianship passed down from her heroes, including traditional players from Orkney with its Scandinavian influence. <clears throat> Lawrence is also from Orkney. He's inspired by his, the fiddling of his father and grandfather, his grand, who led the Orkney's West Mainland Hispanic Real Society in the 1960s, which uh, immersed him in traditional styles of piano playing. So let's give a big silent applause <laughs> to welcome Jennifer and Lawrence. Thank you very much for being here. Mm. Hello. Thank you for having us. It's lovely to see so many familiar faces. I want to say hello to every single one. <laughs> so uh, hello to everybody. Um, and it's and it's lovely to be here to pray for you tonight or this afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> um, we're going to start off with a, a little jig that's one of our favourites. And it comes from Orkney. It comes from island of Grahamsey and it's called the Grahamsey jig for want of a better name and then we're going to do the twos which is another Orkney tune by Ronnie Aim and then we're going to play Edwin Flaws of Wire. Edwin Flaws was an accordion player from the island of Wire in Orkney so all Orkney ones to start us off.
Thank you, thank you ever so much. It's lovely to see you all clapping. <laughs> <laughs> well, not me testing you to see if you've been clapping. <laughs> um, those are our first set of tunes and the last one, of course, I should have said that the... Um, <laughs> the last one I should have said was written by Freedom Barber, who isn't actually from Orkney, but he's um, almost an honorary Arcadian accordionist. I'm very well known in Orkney. So we're going to do um, another tune that has a Graham C connections. If you've never been to Graham C, then you should, because it's a great place to go. Um, they're a wild lot, so you have to sort of have your wits about you. Um, but this next tune was written by Lawrence's dad, and it's one of our favourites. We play it a lot. It's called the Hattie Manorie. The Hattie Manorie is like a sort of, I don't know if you've heard of the Old Man of Hoy, which is like a cliff stack in Hoy that sometimes people park cars on and try and sell them um, on the TV adverts. Well, the Hattie Manorie uh, overlooks Hoy and is similar to the Old Man of Hoy, except not quite so ostentatious, a bit smaller. <laughs> I don't think the people in Graham see would be as big as big for the boots as the folk in Hoy to have the old man which is much bigger. So uh, the Hattie Manor is like a sort of small cliff stack. How how No idea. <laughs> <laughs> how tall would it be? I um don't know. Anyway, you can climb onto it quite easily. <laughs> well you can. You're twelve anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so maybe maybe uh, Lawrence's dad could put in the chat or Bryce could put in the chat what height because I'm sure you know exactly what height it is <laughs> from experience. Um, so that's the first tune, it's called The Hattie Manory. And the second one is one I wrote very recently for hot some... Hot off the press. Hot off the press, yeah. And it's for some fantastic friends of mine that live, well both of ours that live in South Ronaldsey in a place called Hestily. And it's called The Hestily Hornpipe. So that's for them. So um, we'll do the Hattie Menery and the Hesterly Hornpipe. We'll be testing you on the names of these tunes afterwards.
you, thank you very much. Thank you for that one. That uh, was for Andy and Joan, Andy Mitchell and Joan Maynard. Okay, we're going to do something a bit slower now. Um, so you sit back and relax. And um, this is a tune that I composed. Um, I don't know, I think it was about 2011, something like that. So it's actually quite a long time ago now when you think about it. Um, so both Lawrence and I grew up playing in Orkney uh, and were heavily involved with the Orkney Strathbay and Rural Society, which is a, a group that still meets, although I, oh, I think they maybe have just started meeting again uh, every Thursday night in Kirkwall. And uh, it was full of fantastic fiddle players and there were quite a few not so good fiddle players as well. <laughs> but they were, uh, they were the wicked ones, uh, the ones that were great fun. And um, we were just very fortunate really to have such fantastic memories of all these older players. And you know, in last night's concert, I don't know if you, if you saw it with Ingrid and Ian, and if you didn't, you definitely I recommend that you, that you watch that because it, it'll be available online. And it was excellent. And they spoke as well about uh, some of the older players that they were so lucky to get to to be influenced by. So um, the Strathbane and Real played a huge part in our upbringing. I'm surprised we haven't like lost our teeth and got flat caps by now because that's that was the thing that you had to have to be in the Strathbane and Real. Um, and mostly a sense of humour. <laughs> so. Uh, the current leader of the Orkney Strathbane and Rail Society, a man called Ian Cutness, asked me if I would write a tune for his mother and father, his mum and dad, who were celebrating their golden wedding anniversary. And of course I, I was honoured and wrote a tune for them and it's called James and Emily Cutness. So that's what we're going to play for you and it's for anybody who's been married for 50 years or would like to be married for 50 years, or maybe when doesn't want to be married anymore. Anyway, it's, it's a sort of optimistic love tune. Um, the sad thing about the tune, of course, is that <coughs> maybe about a week after their 50th anniversary, Emily sadly passed away, so they just made it to 50 years. But this is the tune, it's called James and Emily Cutness.
thank you, thank you so much, thank you. Um, so after James and Emily Curtis there we played some Strathface. The first one was El Grey by James Hill from um, Gateshead, Dundee stroke Gateshead. And then we did The Strind, it's called, uh, Two Orkney Winds by the same, the same composer. A lovely, lovely, amazing, inspirational fiddle player called Huey Ingster who we used to listen to and have laughs with a lot when we were both PD and uh, the first one was called The Strind and the second one was called El Adam. The, Str the Strind is a kind of um, pedestrian walkway where it all happens in Kirkwall and uh, you know at the one end of the Strind is the council offices where all the big decisions are made and at the other end of the Strind is couple of telephone boxes although I think they might have got rid of them by now but uh, it's a, it's a it's an important place where you go to see all the important people making all the big decisions in Orkney and uh, lovely tunes certainly some of our favourite right we're going to play you a couple of jigs now and um, we're very impressed at your attire as well coming out to the concert you all look great we were just talking earlier because there's a very important event tonight that apparently we're all missing. Oh, the BAFTAs. Sorry about that. <laughs> BAFTAs. Uh, uh, some of you won't understand what that is. It's the British something something television awards. So. But you have to get dressed up. So we've obviously all made the effort. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're, we're both very pleased that you, that you chose us <laughs> over the BAFTAs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to play you a jig that comes from Dearness. It's actually spelt Dearness. It's where I grew up on the East Midland of Orkney. But in Dearness you say Dearness. It's not Dearness, it's Dearness. So it's the Dearness jig we're going to play, one of our favourites. And then we're going to do another one that I've just not long composed. And it was for a very good, lovely friend called Davy Sinclair, who plays the fiddle. And he was celebrating a big birthday. And I can't say which one, because it might embarrass him. But it was a big birthday. And uh, so we wrote, I wrote a tune for him. And it's called Sinclair's Chig. So that's what we're going to play for you next. And uh, please feel free to do some dancing. Um, you, you know, you can do whatever you want in your own homes. <laughs>
you. Thank you very much. Thank you. After all that excitement, you have to write a fast tune like that for someone who's who's uh, having an older birthday. We'll not say any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to do uh, another. Well, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't done it yet. But it's a, a, Scot a Scottish one by. Um, we've got two Scott Skinner ones for you tonight, but this. This one is one of our favourites again. Uh, Scott Skinner, of course, was, you know, I was going to say outstanding, but he was sort of upside down standing um, when he was <laughs> playing the fiddle, and he was a massive, massive fiddle playing star. Um, famous, of course, for standing us on his head playing the fiddle with his kilt on, which we're not going to be doing for you. Um, <laughs> Maybe it makes the tunes easier, <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> he played very difficult tunes and wrote some amazingly beautiful tunes and was famous for writing harmonies. I, you know, I think he wrote over 600 tunes. And when Scott Skinner died, um, it would be in about the 1940s, I think, um, 60,000 people lined the streets of Aberdeen for his funeral. So he was a proper, proper fiddle playing star. And um, this is one of his less ostentatious fiddle uh, tunes that he wrote, and it's called The Music of the Spay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Right, something a little bit more upbeat now. We're going to do some hornpipes. 
The first is called the pulpy leaf and then we're going to do the fiddler's cramp, fingers crossed. And then we're going to do um, the bee's wing, Holland Pipe, um, which is another one by James Hill from Gateshead. And then we're going to do two Orkney hornpipes written by uh, a man called Chimmy Chillinston, who was also from Darnus and was known as Chibic o' Marland, because that's where he lived, at Marland, which was just at the bottom of the road where I grew up. And uh, the first is called the Orkney Isles Hornpipe, followed by Toe Reed, uh, who was, a, who was a, another man from Darnus that worked at the farm Braybuster. Um, then we're going to do another Scott Skinner one. And no, we're not going to stand on our heads for it either. Um, Scott Skinner was quite intelligent, really. He was always writing tunes for posh, notable people, just like me, really, with the ones that I've written. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he wrote this one for another sort of very posh lady. And you get a lot, you get a lot of gigs if you write tunes for posh people. Um, so this one is called Madame Neruda and she sounds sophisticated, doesn't she? <coughs> All I can say is that she... I think she was a fiddle player too. So I think she maybe was. Down. Yeah. She was a fiddle player and a madam. And um, I would say if her tunes anything to go by, she was a bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you ever so much. Fooey. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed to the Alex. Hi Alex. Um, was saying that Madame Naruto was the was the um, wife of the condu conductor or the leader of the Harley Orchestra. It's disappeared now along the along the thing. So certainly worth a few brownie points if you if you write for the the, <laughs> the wife of the Harley Orchestra <laughs> um, leader. So fooey. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, it's a, it's a, it's been a privilege to be asked to play. Uh, thank you, Ed, for organising it, and um, it's lovely to be involved. And I did a workshop earlier, and we did an Orkney tune in that. And I'm hoping that there'll be lots of pretty half Arcadian Americans playing the old polka. <laughs> I forgot to tell them that it's not the old polka; it's the old polka. Big difference. <laughs> um, so we're going to do um, From Darkness again. Um, probably one of my biggest inspirations for the playing the fiddle was a man called Davy Younsen. And Davy was a very, very um, brilliant fiddle player. He made over 100 fiddles. He was a boat builder, a poet, a singer, and uh, he wrote loads of tunes as well. He was famous for playing in Dernus with his wife Violet who played along with him on the piano and uh, when you went to Davy's house he had a small, he was a farmer and he had a small Orkney croft with the flag floors and the, and the stone wall um, which was f full of fiddles, all different fiddles that he'd either made or had passed down to him from his uncle and such like that taught him to play the fiddle um, he had a tin fiddle, he had a brass fiddle, he had um, some hardanger fiddles that he'd made, the Norwegian hardanger fiddles. He had obviously his own fiddle, he had he had a fiddle that was made out of a fishing buoy, an orange uh, float, a fishing float. Um, and the thing I remember about going there when I was little is that he would just say, which fiddle do you want to have a shot at? And he would let me have a shot and then we'd go into the into the shed where he made the fiddles and uh, he'd have a half made fiddle on the bench and he'd give me the hammer and the chisel and say have a little shot <laughs> and as a, as a 12 year old I was a bit terrified I was going to wreck this beautiful fiddle but he was a truly inspirational guy and from Dernus where we both were um, you can see five lighthouses um, on the horizon from Dernus because it's obviously you know on, on Colton Sea and the Skerries and, and such like and all the lighthouses go with a different rhythm the lights go at so you know which you know which lighthouse it is that you're looking at and of course up until probably would it been the 80s or the 70s um, most of these lighthouses were manned and now of course all automatic but they were manned and Davy was sitting at home on a wild night, seeing these lights going and thinking about these these watchmen that were sitting in these lighthouses when everybody else was tucked up nice and warm, but they were keeping everybody safe. So the first tune is called The Watchman's Polka. And then we're going to do another one that was by a fantastic fiddle player who used to go at the Strathbane real, real as well as Davy, called Pat Scherer. And Pat Scherer was a absolute scream played the fiddle he was brilliant fun his one of his best tricks uh, was picking his nose with his false teeth while he was playing the fiddle and <laughs> you can imagine when we were pd that was that got our attention but he was also a brilliant fiddle player and he wrote this tune for his dad tom mm -hmm. shara who was one of the few remaining weavers left on the island of stronzi um, and so it's called the Strunzi Weaver, and you should be able to hear the little weaving, uh, the tr of the weaving in there. Um, and then we're going to do one by Irene Flett that won the tune writing competition called Irene's Reel. Um, she must have really been struggling to think of a name, but she still won. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's called Irene's Reel, and then we're, we'll finish off with a fairy dance. You can't go wrong with a fairy dance, can you? So um, uh, as I say, it's been a privilege and a pleasure and you know I'm sure Lawrence is nodding in agreement <laughs> <Absolutely, yeah>. thank, <laughs> you. thank you for listening thank you for coming and uh, yeah. 
we'll finish off with these ones. Is it now time to tune the fiddle? <laughs>
Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.